In this video, I'm going to show you how I optimize my Facebook ad campaigns to promote my music on the first day of a song coming out. Because a lot of people don't realize that the campaigns you initially create aren't often the campaigns you end up with by the time you're done running your campaign. Meaning, you launch a campaign, you have to target certain people, run certain ads. You're usually going to be wrong about your initial guesses most of the time. Um, and I think this will make more sense if you're not sure what I'm talking about if we just dive in. So let's just dive in. So right now I have this campaign for my new song that came out literally today. I'm shooting this video the same day it's getting uploaded. So I came out today um, and you'll hear it in a sec when I show you one of the ads. So I have this conversion campaign, normal structure you've seen in a bunch of other of my videos. I'll link to one of them right here um, using a hyped landing page. And I'm running it at $40 or $45 a day for just the first few days. Um, so as of now, that's what it's doing. Um, as of Sunday or Monday, it'll ramp down to 30 and then it'll kind of ramp down week by week after that. So initially I launched it with just these two ad sets, one targeting Post Malone and one targeting pop woman artists. So there's like Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, a few others, um, just because I felt like the, the writing style fit this song decently well. So if we dive into one of these ads, um, I have four ads that I've made here and I'll play you one of them um, because they're all kind of a similar thing and I'll just show that on the screen right now. So as you saw, it's just like a vertical formatted 15 second clip on feed placements. It runs like a four by five or a square, de depending on how I felt that day. <laughs> um, but that's that's a piece of the song and that's the kind of video style. So performance type video. Um, and we initially went with these two ad sets. So, you know, when I woke up this morning, I checked and I saw that these were going at 74 cents and 68 cents conversion. And obviously that's high. That's like two to three times it's three times higher than I would like it to be. I would like it to be in the 20s kind of range. Obviously, the cheaper, the better, but 20s, 20 something cents for a conversion cost is pretty solid. Sometimes we get ones that are in the teens and that's fantastic, but um, that's, it's obviously more rare and more difficult. So I'd like these to be in the 20s. So obviously, it's not where I want it to be, but that's normal. Very rare that I'll have a campaign where from my initial guess of targeting and also ads, is it going to be that good? Um, so what I did is I did peek at the ads and I saw that we had a good spread. So 70 cents for this chorus one, 47 cents for the verse one, pre-chorus to chorus 62. And that was inside of Post Malone, inside of Pop Woman, um, 67 and 87. So we're getting a good spread, which is good. Um, different types of prices. So over time, Facebook should be able to prioritize one over the other and get some costs down. Um, but I did make two new ones because I wanted to kind of figure out if I can get it better. So I created an indie pop one that's shown pretty badly so far, but it only has two results. So I'm not gonna turn it off yet because I've only spent $3 here. Same with this one. This one's doing much better. It's doing twice as good as the other ones roughly, but it's only spent $2.26, so not really enough data to figure out if I should turn everything off yet or not. However, this gives me a good indication that I should probably pursue something similar to this um, going forward because the pop direction isn't going so hot and same with the indie pop um, and then the Post Malone thing. So Post Malone's kind of hip hop pop. So I'm not going to bother pursuing that more like I could target Machine Gun Kelly. Um, but that's and of course, my dog decides to bark right in the middle of recording a video. But <laughs> so this gives me an indication that I should probably pursue more of this rock pop hybrid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So now we got to make something new. So let's go down to the targeting. And by the way, all of this is only like Tier one and tier two countries, I excluded all of tier three. Um, so that's not like just excluding India or Philippines, that's excluding like like 30 countries. So I'm sticking with generally slightly more expensive countries. So this campaign is gonna be a little more expensive than some of the campaigns you've, you've seen on this channel where I target like most Spotify countries. Um, so you can see what I did here for the pop rock hybrid. I'm doing like artists that are like essentially a combination like imagine dragons is like poppy but they have some rock vocals bastilles kind of a bit of blend panic disco paramore are very like punk but they're also very pop and they've kind of evolved over time in 21 pilots so i gotta figure out something else in this direction and i kind of already have some stuff in mind like i want to pursue the punk thing more so i think fallout boy would be a good one so i'm going to add fallout boy first and then delete all the other ones that i had suggestions and we've already done some of these 
So let's see what's available. And you don't always have to use suggestions. Like if you had something in mind, that'd be good. But um, suggestions can be a pretty good inspiration point to jump off of. I think Blink-182 would be good. It's kind of a weirder one, but I'm going to roll with it. Um, Green Day, I don't I don't want to combine with this. I think All Time Low would be a decent combination. Take Max Sunday. I'm 41, I think Two Punk. Day to remember, I think they should be separated because they're so big. So now we see that this audience size is a lot smaller than my Rock Pop Hybrid. Actually, it's not that much smaller, but it's a lot smaller than Pop Woman and Post Malone, which I don't like. Sometimes you can't always do anything about this. Um, I mean, Warp Tour, that's pretty broad. That doesn't really increase the audience too much, though. Um, you know what? I think I'll stick with this one, and I'm going to add another one. So let's call this, like, Punky. The keyboard decided to turn off. So this is going to be Punky, Pop, Punk kind of thing. Hybrid. Um, and then I'm going to... I actually have a fourth ad that's in some of these, so I'm going to copy this Chorus B. Um... Copy, go up here to this ad set, click through dots, and paste. And now we're going to have that ad in there as well. So now I can go over to this ad set and just click publish. And that's going to load. So while this is going, I got to think about another thing I can target. And a day to remember while they're like completely like, you heard the song. This is a pop track. But um, I think that's like since their newer stuff is so poppy, it might not be the worst target in the world. I kind of just want to try something else. Um, I'm on the fence about including them in here, but I'm not going to. So let's let's click three dots and do quickly duplicate. <clears throat> and now we have this new one. I'm going to go down to these artists. And let's just remove all of them. Day to remember. And some of you might think I'm crazy with this, but like, it, keep in mind I target Linkin Park a lot, and my music sounds pretty much nothing like Linkin Park. Um, so they're a little bit too small. So I'm getting in a completely different direction here, right? This is like almost metal territory. Um, but I'm hoping that maybe there's something about it that people will like. Um, heavier bands. <laughs> um, I don't know what to, like, unsure. So I, I'm kind of just reminding myself later that I don't, I don't know if this one's going to be completely just out of whack or not. Um, suggestions. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just publish this one. This is fine. And I want to do a third new one. I think I want to go, like, even more in the, the poppy direction. Um, this song, I really wanted to target an artist like Imogen Heap, but she's not targetable on um, Facebook ads. So I want to pull up her Spotify profile here. And basically what I'm going to do here is, and, like, this, this one's kind of a light fit, but, like, the way she writes her melodies and some of her more poppy and, I guess, catchy tracks is it feels like it would be a very good fit. Um, and so I want to look at her fans also like section and try to see if any of these artists are actually targetable. And this is kind of a lesson for any of you that can't target the people you want to. This is one approach where you can try to find some artists that might be targetable. So now I'm going to quickly duplicate this heavier bands one. And let's make this Imogen Heap related. I'm going to scroll down here. We're going to delete these heavier artists. And just to make sure I'm not insane, Imogen Heap is not there. Fru Fru, not targetable. Kate Havnevik, not targetable. Jem, not targetable. Tori Amos, she is targetable. Okay, so that's a start. And now let's click Suggestions. And Bjork? Now, I don't know. Oh, Radiohead actually might not be the worst target in the world. Um, okay, let's let me grab some other related artists here. Nessa Carlton, she's targetable. I've never heard her music. I'm just gonna kind of trust that this is like a decent direction to do. Sarah Borelli's. I'm not sure if she'd be the best fit because um, she's a little bit more jazzy, but I'm gonna try it anyways. And let's keep on moving. There's one called Isley. Never heard of, but she's not targetable. Kate Nash, she is targetable. Really small, but. Well, relatively small, but targetable. Bat for lashes. Bat for lashes is targetable. Relatively small, but still in there. So I haven't gone through every single one of these. Let's do Fiona Apple, and she is targetable. Um, and that didn't really change my audience size too much. So let's look at suggestions again. And if there's any, oh, ju no. Was there a jewel? Oh, gem. <laughs> um, I think Muse. Muse is too big. I don't want them to dominate this one. 
It said Bon Iver was related. I don't know Bon Iver, um, so I'm just going to take Facebook's word on it, which is probably a bad move, but um, it's not, it wasn't big compared to all these other ones. Um, and I'm going to stick with this because this is a reasonable size. So I'm just going to keep Imogen Heap related, and I'm going to publish this. And, I've you know, again, this is kind of what I do when when I run out of my initial guesses. Like, the, the first time you run a campaign is going to be the worst time you run a campaign because you really don't know who works. For me, this song is kind of a weird one because it's like the happiest sounding poppy track we've ever done. It's not as like electronic in a way, but there's also no guitars. It's like piano driven. Um, so it's kind of a unique track for me. So that's why I'm a little iffy on the targeting. Like my last few songs, Post Malone, Machine Gun Kelly would work great. Also just targeting pop music, um, which I'm keeping in mind here. But the reason why I haven't just thrown in a big pop or open audience yet is because if you do that from day one, I found that it can kind of screw up everything because it's just so big. It's going to take all the conversions and get all the ad spend, even if one of your other ones are, are better. So I think tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and add the pop one. So as you can see here, like, you know, first day we had this, um, or sorry, not even first day, like launching at midnight when the song came out, I had this. And then like today at 11 in the morning or something, I added these. And now we've added three more. So our ad is like, you know, three and a half times bigger our campaign is three and a half times bigger than it was. And in fact, I even added a new ad today. Like this ad wasn't there from midnight. This ad got added at around midnight. And so now we've kind of made our campaign a little bit bigger. So now, like, I'm not going to do any more changes right now, but I want to kind of start to look at some of the ad performances to see if um, I can learn anything from it because I can make more ads. Um, they're all the kind of performance thing, but I did a bunch of different takes with different ways of doing it. Um, so I want to see how things are going. So I opened up... I don't know if you saw that little trick there. I highlighted all the campaigns that have data or all the ad sets that have data. And I'm going to go into the ads. And then I'm going to sort it by ad name and just kind of see if there's a trend. So let's see. The cheapest performing ad is this post, this pre-chorus to chorus, but it only has one result. Um, and it's relative expense from the other two. This one, chorus one side singing, is doing decent. It has six, so that's more promising. Um, it seems like the rock pop hybrid ad set. Oh no, this one is from indie pop. All right, so that's interesting. So this one's getting the most budget. Chorus, pre chorus. Not too much. I mean, verse one is actually showing promise, but it only has two results. Um, all of these have the, the chorus in some way. So I'm wondering if. I, I think what this tells me is that I probably have too much of the chorus, or I probably have enough of the chorus. I should probably make a bridge and even a um, more verse ads because of this initial data, because I, I do have plenty of data on the chorus and maybe that's not the smartest move. Um, so what that means is I can open up, you know, my premiere session. What I did is I filmed all these little performance things for the whole song, a few different angles, some with Spotify logo, some without. Um, and now we just got to cut different parts of the song for those different versions. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is is I think I'm going to make another part to this video in a few days to kind of show like the next step of optimizations after this. Um, because a, a lot of people when I've done consultation calls, like they think you just make a campaign and leave it. And that's really not what happens. Like every campaign I've done, even the best campaigns I've ever done, have pretty much involved this level of, of tweaking and trial and error. Like every campaign is a ton of trial and error. So if you want to learn more about how I like construct the initial campaigns, you can check out this playlist right here. I also have a course you can check it right there. It's also in the description along with a link to book consultations if you want some extra help. Anyways, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.